Zora has conquered hockey. There, video done over. That's all that matters. That's all that happened. That's all that freaking matters is that Sanji fanboys sit down. Sit down. Because Zoro has Conquerors Hockey. I know that's been a huge debate. I don't know why. It's one of those things where Zoro did not necessarily ever need Conquerors Hockey, I would argue. Though this chapter leads me to believe that maybe actually, yeah, it's almost a requirement to become the best. The very best that no one ever was, right? Um, because it's something that we've sort of theorized about and talked about for a long time. One of the key things, though, before we even get into that, is the fan basis. Is the One Piece community as a whole has always been on Zoro will get Conqueror's Hockey, Zoro shouldn't get Conqueror's Hockey, does Zoro, will he ever get Conqueror's Hockey? It's always been a bit of a debate thing and a hot topic in the One Piece community. Now, what I never understood was, what I never understood was, why not? Because out of a lot of the arguments I saw, it was like, well, Luffy's the captain, Luffy's the conqueror, he's going to be the emperor, he's the fifth emperor, he's the one who needs conquerors. Like, it, it, they don't need it. Like, it. like, it's the main guys, you know, it's the main member of every crew. And I went, okay. Um, so, Katakuri had what again? He's a part of what crew? Okay. Uh, Rayleigh? Rayleigh? Yeah, yeah, because they were the Rayleigh Pirates, right? Right? Yeah, yeah. He wasn't a first mate. Katakuri's not a first mate or a commander. No, 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 no. And, uh, yeah. So, I never understood that argument right out of, out of the gate. Is that literally the Straw High crew is going to be the, as Jinbei pointed out and why he joined, they will do what the Roger Pirates did. They are going to conquer the Grand Line. They are the future Pirate King's crew. And the original Pirate King's crew had a couple of Conquerors on it, too. Actually, it had three on there, if you recall, because Shanks was on that crew as well. So, and Odin was on that crew. Look at Whitebeard's crew. Odin was on that crew, too. Ace was on that crew. Like, you can have multiple Conquerors on a single crew. The Roxy, the Rox Pirates had multiple Conquerors, like at least four to five of them. So I never understood that argument. That seemed to be one of the biggest arguments leading up to this chapter and this big reveal was Zoro can't have Conquerors because that would make the Straw Hats OP and stuff. It's like they're handing out Conquerors too easily. They're doing this, they're doing that. No, no, that's not really how it works. And I'm just like, does everyone tend to forget who else has Conquerors or something? So I have no idea. But either way, that's the main thing for me coming away from this chapter. There is some other stuff that happens, and we're going to get into it right now in the review, but I needed to start this review off with Zoro has Conqueror's Hockey. I, I've watched a couple videos where people were like, well, Kaido assumed... No, no, no. Sorry, guys. This is Oda all but basically... He literally wrote it in black and white. It's right there in front of you. If you don't want to believe it, that's up to you, but as far as I'm concerned, this is confirmation. So, But we'll get into that. That being said... In this chapter, of course, Big Mom does get saved. You know, we sort of knew that that was going to happen. And even if it didn't, remember, she fell into the sea before. And remember that the currents around Wano are so crazy that she ended up on shore anyway. Now, uh, yeah, she might sink to the bottom. But as I said, the currents are so crazy that she wouldn't sink to the bottom and she'd wind up on shore again anyways. For normal people, non-Yonko people, they'd probably die in the ocean. But because it's Big Mom, it's similar to like somebody like Odin and a Yonko. I mean, she's just going to keep going until it washes her up on shore anyway. So yeah, it might have taken her out of the fight easier. But at the end of the day, I never thought that she was going to end up in the ocean. And that was going to be the end of Big Mom. That's, that's a little too unceremonious for a Yonko, right? So this all happens. Um... Kaido has to, of course, help and get uh, Zoro away from Prometheus because that's the only way it's going to happen because he recognized what's happening. That attack last chapter on Luffy made him comatose. I'm not surprised that it did. I'm not surprised at all. Ragnarok. You know, I'm, I'm not surprised. That being said, though, uh, it it's sort of getting a feeling here, okay, how many times is Kaido gonna literally knock Luffy out now? <laughs> like, or should we keep a counter of that shit in the corner or something? But either way, 
uh, law tries to intervene with injection shot. What does injection shot do? I have no idea. I didn't reread Jess Rosa, so if they explain it there, I have no idea. It just looks like a goddamn like pers precision like attack at a vital artery sort of idea because they do the lock on thing sort of idea and then it's like shing right in like a stab move so if that's the case i think injection shot is just literally a, a precise stabbing motion shot to hit a vital like an artery a main vein a main organ whatever right uh in this case it looks like we're trying to hit kaido in the esophagus but uh either way uh Kaido does seem to take some damage from this. It looks like he's coughing up blood from this and stuff. And that's, that's somewhat, that, that's pretty impressive. And he even says that your abilities really throw me off. Because once again, the Law's abilities, he's able to attack Kaido from the inside out. So Kaido's crazy durability and his endurance on like whether his scales, whatever. And we sort of find out, I believe, why he's so indestructible uh, here is uh, in this chapter. But... For the most part, Law's abilities sort of skip over the, the problem with that. They skip over Kaido's durability with the way his, of course, the Api Api no Mi works. So that's kind of interesting. But either way, he tries to block um, what uh, what's going to happen here to Zoro and stuff. But in the end, he rooms away Zoro. He attacks Kaido. Kaido attacks Law. And Prometheus and Napoleon do get away. They go down. But Kid and Killer are on their trail they're gonna go take down big mom sort of ideas the plan like law says listen the plan was to separate them and to take them down individually but if we lose even one person to do so then we're gonna be screwed anyway so it's sort of like okay that that might not have worked out so well and kids like not nah, actually that i mean the the plan was to separate them they're separated we'll go take care of big mom see you later and it's like okay uh, and we do see that Prometheus and Napoleon, they're pretty mad at Zeus and everything. And they have an idea. Prometheus has an idea because Zeus has just been useless for a long time, according to them. And we see the storm clouds starting to move and rumble. And it's just like, so there's some theories here. Like, number one, Prometheus, there are still the flames holding up uh, Onigashima. So... Could Prometheus eat those flames? Dragon flames of Kaido? Is that one of the ideas? And just let the whole place go crashing into the ocean? I, I don't know. Um, that one seems unlikely, especially with the storm clouds rumbling. Maybe Big Mom is going to make a new Zeus? That's Or, or a new homie instead of like make the storm homie or something like that instead of a cloud one it's going to be like a similar idea right because remember mother caramel also had a prometheus i forget what what uh prometheus was called uh back then but uh either way had a, her own flame homie off her, out of her own soul so now uh big mom might be trying to make a new zeus now i don't know what does that mean uh for what will happen to the current zeus will that make him disappear will that free him will that i mean because sort of nami's upgrade is what a lot of people thought so i've been waiting to see how zeus is supposed to get back to nami in the end and this would be a way of zeus if uh big mom actually just abandons current zeus it's possible um i'm not really sure because kid and killer are looking up and they're seeing the storm clouds acting really strange but then we jump over to the main thing and the main thing of course is Kaido just making fun of Luffy, but also sort of not really making fun of him exactly, but he is like he's sort of complimenting him, but at the same time he's like, huh, look at that face, look at water, 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 look at that face, even unconscious, he has the balls to glare at me. Like, you know, maybe, and then he just starts like trash on, oh, maybe I'll crush those eyes first, maybe, you know, I'll take his brain and just or maybe I'll grab his heart and rip it out of his chest. He's thinking about ways to take him down while he's like, yeah, you can keep glaring at me, kid, but I'm about to kill you. This is where Zoro tells Law that this is his final attack. He's at the limit of his abilities because Law said previously in this chapter that that attack that Zoro managed to block for only a second or two, but still that attack shattered or broke a, at least a lot of the bones or did significant damage. And he would know, he's a doctor, uh, to Zoro's body. Like, that could... Right now, he wouldn't be surprised if all 200-plus bones in, in Zoro's body are, like, sh 
fractured or cracked or broken all or completely just gone. Uh, but Zoro's still kicking, and this is manga, this is anime. So uh, he basically says, all right, here's the deal. I'm going to launch one more attack at the limit of my ability. If this fight drags on. We can't do it. So here, I'm actually at first, I was a little disappointed. Not disappointed to finally see, after you said, that's my captain. We see Demon or Nine Sword Style. We see the Demon Ashura form, right? We haven't seen that post time skip. This is Zoro apparently going all out finally. And it's no better time than to do it against a Yonko, against Kaido. I'm like, okay, Zoro going all out against Yonko. Um, fair deal, fair deal. So he's finally going into his his number one attack, an attack that we haven't seen. Uh, and this one seems to be a different attack from his previous ones when he used Azura. This one's called Dead Man's Game. Uh, what it seems to do is doesn't seem much different than the other attacks that the Azura form did before. They basically just speed blitz and cuts him, you know, nine times in one second sort of idea, uh, which is really cool. I like it, but it disappointed me at first, up until, I mean, we got the reveal later, was because I've been holding out that there's going to be an upgraded version. Now, you could argue that Dead Man's Game is an upgraded version of Ashura Form and stuff, but I was sort of hoping that Zoro had a brand new technique that he's learned in the time skip that he has not, that he learned during the time skip that he hasn't had the need to use yet, and in a Jura form, he's got to use it or whatever. I, I don't know. I, I sort of expected a brand new uh, technique, not just an upgrade of techniques we saw before and not just him going into a Jura, but something maybe even greater than that. I don't know what I expected exactly, but so at first I was like, okay, so this is still Zora's cap right now. As far as we're aware in this chapter, it, it appears to me from... What everybody's been saying and what's said in the chapter is that this is Zoro at his strongest. He's still using his strongest move. Yeah, he's bloody and beaten. It's reminding me like how they had to basically nerf him for a lot of East Blue so he didn't take down Arlong, so he didn't take down this, that, and the other thing, right? Um, they had to make Zoro basically be injured through half of the <laughs> half of the story just so he doesn't, you know, so the main character has something to do instead. Um and here we're just seeing that he's going to use a sure form, the dead man's game. And it looks, it looks amazing. He cuts down, well, he does significant damage to Kaido. Like Kaido takes a whole big scar right across. So I'm curious, once again, he's striking him nine times technically, but is it nine times in the same spot? Like, because there's only one slash and even Law, Law's shocked, Kaido's shocked, everybody's shocked. And Zoro's just like, he speed blitz past him and he's breathing. He's just like, whew, like that, that, that took a lot. That, yep, that was my last attack. That's right. Now, what I believe, I don't think that Zoro's out of the fight yet. I think that Law, seeing what Zoro was able to do and Law knowing that really, even with his Oppie Oppie no me powers, his hockey isn't strong enough to really do anything significant to Kaido anymore that maybe Law will now heal up Zoro. Because at the end of the chapter, of course, we know Kaido is fighting up against uh, Luffy sort of one-on-one -on -one is, is the intention. But if Law could get, because Law could still room take Zoro away, he could take him away, he could maybe heal him up with his super medical knowledge, get Zoro into a, a bit of a, I don't know, at the last second sort of idea, show up again to help Luffy out because I still don't think that Kaido has taken enough damage for Luffy to still take him down 1v1. It, it, it doesn't seem like there's enough there. More has to happen, in my opinion, uh, before, that that's, before that's possible. So I still think that Zoro's going to get healed up by Law and then Zoro's going to come back for a couple more strikes. Um, so yeah, but here we see Kaido actually has a scar. It's actually running across the scar that Odin left. And it's running across his entire chest this time down to that scar. And even Kaido's just shocked. And I mean, he's coughing up blood and he's just like, don't tell me that you also use Conqueror's Hockey. And to me, I'm just like, yep. Now I have heard 
once again, I've heard theories. Some people are saying, no, Kaido's assuming and he's wrong and whatever, whatever. No, no, no. This actually makes total sense as to how maybe demon, maybe demon form, maybe demon Ashura is the manifestation of Zoro's Conqueror's Hockey. Maybe it's always been that way and nobody else n knew it or recognized it at the time. That's the that's the point. That's the deal. But I've also heard some people saying that it's uh, uh, that it's uh, Enma. This is all Enma's doing, and the Enma is the reason that this is working and stuff. Which, sure, that's an explanation. But not only did Oda tease Zoro having Conqueror's hockey like eight or nine chapters ago, or whenever it was when they're still in the festival, maybe 10, 10 11 chapters ago. When he basically was shouting at Queen, and uh, you know, and he was like shouting, and then the whole place rumbled. They're like, "Zoro, you're using Conqueror's hockey." He's like, "No, that's not me," and stuff. And it was sort of like a tease for the fans. Mm, and then to do it again, I could see Oda playing off that first joke just to like sort of wet the appetites of the Zoro fans. But to then do it a second time for it not to be true, no, no, sorry guys, like Oda's not gonna do that. I don't buy that. I don't buy that they would tease, you know, and make a joke that Zoro has uh, Conqueror's Hockey and then literally during a main, a serious fight and have the main villain, a Yonko, come to the conclusion that he's got Conqueror's Hockey. Sorry, not, not twice in 20 chapters does it become a joke. I'm sorry. I just don't buy it. I just don't buy that. Um, so, yeah, you could make the excuse that this was all Enma's doing. Uh, but I think Kaido would sort of know the difference because as it's revealed later on here in the chapter, uh, there is a trick to this. There's a trick to hurting Kaido and it's not about rear woe. It's not, well, it sort of is the same idea behind it, the same uh, technique, but it's not about having strong armament hockey. The way to hurt Kaido is conqueror's hockey. Hence why Odin could scar him. Hence why all the people in the flashback, in the sort of the silhouette behind Luffy, were all conquerors, and now he's been scarred again. His the logical conclusion. Remember, we just saw Law do an injection shot, and he didn't go. Oh my God, he 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 hurt me, so he must have. No 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 no. He didn't he didn't say the Law had conquerors after stabbing him. He's like, no, that was a physical slash that shouldn't have been able to cut me, and it did. So that's what he's saying. He said, don't tell me that you can also use Conqueror's Hockey. Now, Zoro doesn't think he can. Zoro doesn't know. It's not been manifested yet. He's not aware of it yet. And he says, what are you talking about? I don't have any idea what you're talking about. And this is where he said, but that was still the best attack I could do. And I still couldn't even knock you off your feet. So what are you talking about? Like, you're saying I'm a Conqueror. I got Conqueror's Hockey, but... Like, what the hell is this? Like, I couldn't couldn't even knock you down with my strongest attack. And Kaido even is, like, shaking. He's shaking, and he's just like, fuck, that really hurt. And he goes, like, you did enough. This is going to leave a scar. And I'm surprised he didn't mention, like, there's, like, only one person ever put an actual scar on my body, and here we go, and now you've left a second scar sort of idea. You should be proud of that. Like, yeah, okay, you didn't knock me down, but you, you scarred Kaido of the beasts, you know? So there is that. This is where he's going to take him down, though, and he says that, you know, your generation is proving nothing to be an annoyance. Here we go. Uh, Law tries to uh, go at him and, uh, you know, to help him, and he says, Zoro, get out of here, and Kaido just looks at him and says, you stay there or I'll come to you too. Thunder Bagua. And he hits both Zoro, who just looks like he's about to pass out, and Law, who uh, I don't believe passes out with this attack, but they both get struck down. The thing is, is that now Zoro is down for the count, but as I said, I still believe that Law is going to heal him up because I don't think that right here is when uh, this is the time for the 1v1. So he continues to say, like, you guys are all strong. We could have taken on the world together. Why couldn't you just join me? This is just stupid. And this is where, you know, Luffy basically is talking smack. Luffy's back. He's not unconscious anymore. He stands up and he tells Kaido, with you, we'd never go with you, you moron. We love the samurai. The samurai are our friends. We would never even consider joining you. And you are going down. This is where we get Hyorogoro. And this is how he figures it out. Hyorogoro 
in the flashback is talking and it's the same way that Rayleigh said is that in the midst of danger hockey blooms the best in a crisis in a dangerous situation on death's door that's when when your life is on the line that's when hockey is exponential growth so it's sort of like in a video game yeah you might be down to one hp but you get a limit break right you get or or your level your experience gained if you win with one hp you get three times the experience points, right? So you level up quicker if you're on death's door. That's how sort of hockey works. Hockey blooms, hockey just ex exponential growth. So this time we're seeing Hero Go repeat Rayleigh's words in the same way from the flashback. And he says, the hockey you wield penetrates and destroys the enemy from the inside out. Do not overstress. You must allow the hockey to flow into your fist. And he's remembering. And Luffy's sitting there or standing there and he's like no it's still too shallow because he was doing it with ornament hockey he never tried to do it with the thing he has affinity for and he said but after taking that hit from your club again i figured it out i figured out what you've done we've all been assuming and everybody has been doing this that you coat yourself in ornament that everybody in the new world uses ornament to coat themselves why because most people aren't conquerors. There's only a dozen plus people in the world who have conquerors hockey. And but you, that's what you've been doing. This that's why you're so strong. You have been you haven't been using Arnhem hockey. You've been using conquerors hockey to infuse your weapons, your fists, your body with. And Kaido is loving this because he starts laughing his ass off and said. Only a handful of the very strongest can do it. And you're a dead man walking. And he goes to attack him again. But Luffy, observation hockey up. Boom. And this is why he remembered Ryuo. Not Rayleigh, but he remembered Hiro Goro talking to him. Because now he's going to use the idea of Ryuo. Because maybe it, Kaido is coding himself in all conquerors hockey. And maybe that is part of his durability. Hence why, once again, Big Mom, when she's super stressed out, because it's all about maintaining a willpower. Maybe that's why when she got all distraught and stressed out with the Mother Caramel stuff, that's why she's injured. Because these guys constantly exude a like shell of Conqueror's hockey around themselves. That's why Big Mom and Kaido's durability is so goddamn high. <clears throat> so, that is a possibility. However, if it's not... Luffy doesn't seem to be taking the chance and he's applying the same method, the same idea as rear roll with Arnament, but now he's going to do it with Conquerors. And it makes total sense. There has to be an advanced form of Conquerors hockey. Conquerors got to be like, it's supposed to be an OP ability. It shouldn't just take out fodder. We've all said it. it, it like, yeah, Conquerors sounds cool. And yeah, knocking out a whole army by yourself sounds cool in theory. But why would Conquerors be so coveted by the strongest in the world? Why would they care if they had it if that's all it was? It wouldn't matter in a fight. It wouldn't matter Kaido versus Odin. It wouldn't matter Whitebeard versus Roger. If Conquerors wasn't relevant, you know, other than taking out Small Fry, then who would care if you had Conquerors? But no, no, it matters. So, and of course, Luffy's affinity is for Conquerors. So applying the same technique that he learned with Arnament for the real woe, attacking from the inside out because he's not actually hitting anybody here. He kicks the club away, but he's this far away from it. He's applying the same idea with Conquerors. It just makes total sense that he would pick that up like that because his affinity, of course, is for Conquerors. He figured it out. Now, Kaido is just amazed that he's able to do that because he stops Kaido's club and beats it back and then, boom, jumps off the rock and punch right Kaido's gut and Kaido bleeding boom he takes the shot it looks devastating and then uppercut right to his jaw boom but of course he's not touching him he's using the real wall so the advanced ornament idea mixed with or the advanced hockey in general idea mixed with Luffy's own conquers and I would argue that his conquers hockey is stronger than because conquers hockey in general would be stronger than the other two types of hockey plus Luffy's affinity for it it's stronger than his ornament hockey you know that's that's probably the case here so Luffy finally figured it out and Law even said he's not touching him he's not even touching him and he knocked Kaido flat on his ass 
flat on his back, the thing that Zoro wanted to do because now he knows how to get through Kaido's impenetrable defense. You have to be a conqueror to hurt Kaido. That's why the silhouettes of the people were all conquerors. That's what makes them dangerous. So he said, and Luffy just goes on. I mean, there's a break next week, but he just goes, don't worry about it. Zoro, Traffy, thanks for helping me, but you can go down off the roof now. I'm going to beat his ass, and no matter what it takes, I'm going to kick this guy's ass 1v1. And he cracks his knuckles, and that's sort of the deal. I don't believe Zoro and Law are going to necessarily listen to him. They might temp temporary withdrawal. How's that? Temporary retreat. As I said, because I still think that Zoro is not down and out for the rest of the arc. Zoro still got more to do, in my opinion. If this is all he does, major feat after major feat after major feat. Cut the horn off Onigashina, block the double Yonko attack, and cut Kaido, you know, with the reveal of Conqueror's Hockey. So Zoro has feat after feat in this fight. Don't get me wrong. However, and he got the upgrade with Emma. However, still don't think he this is this is the end for Zoro. I think uh, Law is gonna recognize that only guys he, when he realizes the Conqueror's idea, he realized that Zoro was able to cut him. Law is going to figure, my stamina is better suited to what I am. I'm the surgeon. I can fix Zoro so he can go back and fight. Like, I would just get in the way. That's what Law can contribute to the fight. It makes sense. I, I, I'm, just, I'm just saying that that's what I think is going to happen. So that's chapter 1010. 1010. Chapter 1010. Break next week, of course. This chapter, I don't know how anybody could complain about it. To me, it's an easy 10 out of 10. Uh, like, because so much... I mean, even if you aren't a Zoro fanboy. Like, because it's hard. Who do you give the MVP to? Zoro or Luffy? I would argue they both amazing this chapter. The whole chapter was just great. And now we sort of finally... It was sort of a pacing issue a little bit where it was going so slow with... Uh, like, okay, we're seeing the advancement of observation hockey for a whole cake island. And now Wano, which is going to be the longest arc in the next chapter, will officially be the longest arc in the series. Now it's all about the advancement of Arnament hockey. It was like, okay, we've got to wait for the next arc to find out how do you advance Conquerors and what does it look like. But no, we got a double whammy. Here's, here's rear wall. Here's how you advance your Arnament hockey. By the way, advance your Conquerors hockey the same way. Learn to use Conquerors like it's Arnaman Hockey. I love the concept. It makes a lot of sense. And Roger and Whitebeard did it in the flashback. That's what the clash was. It was a clash. They weren't using Arnaman. They were using Conquerors on their blades. That's badass as hell. Like, that is so cool. And once again, I think there's no way. Like, just remember, guys. It could have been a joke. If it wasn't done twice. I don't believe Oda would pull the joke twice. Because it wouldn't be funny then. It would be funny with Brooke going. Yo ho ho ho. Zoro you have Conqueror's Hockey. Yo ho ho That would be funny. Sure. Maybe he, he never gets it. But then to then injure Kaido. And for Kaido to then assume. 12, 15 chapters later. You have Conqueror's Hockey too. Kaido would know. Kaido has been in battles for decades fighting against people with Ironman Hockey, with Observation Hockey, and Conquerors. He has fought against people who use Conquerors. He would know what it feels to be hit by it. So he knows what he got hit by. So I, I just don't see... Kaido's not really assuming anything. He's going, this mother... <laughs> you know, that's what he's doing. He's going, this guy, he's got Conquerors too? Because I know what it feels like to be hit by it because there's only a handful of people that can hurt me like that. And their only way to do it is when they use Conquerors. So, I mean, I see it as definitive. What do you guys think? Like, comment, and subscribe as always. This has been Griever with Chapter 1000 with 1010. Chapter 1010 of One Piece. And we will see you guys back here next time. Well, in, you know, break next week and everything. But we'll see you back here for Chapter 1011. And... Please don't jump away from the rooftop yet. Please don't jump away from the rooftop. This is so exciting. This is so exciting. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Peace out.